Hello, this is Christian, and this week we're going to dive into Unit 7. This is part two of the Flask application development. So now you know how to create a simple Flask application. We're going to uh, do a little bit more. We're going to build another Flask application, and this will be the similar one that you created using the uh, Node.js Express in one of the units before, okay? So um, I have here the Unit 7 data. You should download this from Blackboard. Once you unzip that folder and inside this file or folder, you're gonna see three files or folders. Okay, so the providers here is just a JSON data file. If you open this file, you're gonna see just plain JSON data, okay? So it has that information about the company. Uh, I, I removed some of the information about the company. So we just have like uh, five fields and it's gonna be a hundred um, records here, I think, or around there or so. Okay, so we use that to populate the form. And we're gonna also use the templates in here. I provided all the templates already, so we don't have to you know, spend time doing that. We'll be working mostly on the providers here. We have two forms. We'll do the, the list first, and then next time we'll do the add form. Well, actually we do the add and the list form uh, for this uh, assignment, okay? So that's available. And then there's another one called static. These are just some bootstraps and CSS files just use for styling the forms, okay? So make sure you download it and extract this first. We're gonna add this to the program. So I'll leave that open right here for now. And then I'm gonna go and create my unit seven uh, in here. This will be my unit seven project folder. You can call it unit seven apply or whatever you wanna call it, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just doing some shortcuts here. So go to uh, CMD, load the command terminal and then type code space dot and press enter and that should load the, um, the uh, where's it at? That should load this Visual Studio Code application. It will start here, okay? But um, before, before I do this though, let me see, I need to, yeah. So make sure you're in this uh, um, program now. <clears throat> and then you wanna go into the terminal. So again, press Control J, shortcut, and you should be in unit seven or the project folder if you're not, just make sure you navigate to that location. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to um, create the virtual environment for Python to, to work with or for Flask to work with. So we wanna do and type in the Python-m4 module and then the venv and then venv again. So we're creating a virtual environment a virtual environment folder. This is similar to the no modules and Node.js application. So as you can see, it's really quick. We have a folder here now. Okay, so this is the root uh, directory of a project. So it should be in the VNV folder uh, where, where, it's, where it resides. And then next thing is you want to go ahead and activate the environment. So you want to go and type in VENV and you just hit the, you know, the tab key and it should grab that for you. Inside the VNV, there's a folder called script. So again, you just type in S, hit tab, and then A for activate, and then hit enter. And now you should be in the environment. By looking at this one here, you see it's this little green thing here. Um, it shows you that you are in that environment. Yours may not be green, but it doesn't matter, okay? <clears throat> so you must always be in this environment to, uh, to build applications for Flask. So now we are going to um, create a uh, install Flask to the program, okay? So that's the next thing we wanna do. So let me cl clear this. So just do a pip install and then Flask, hit enter. And that's gonna install it for you. Should be fairly quick. It's just a small uh, micro framework. All right, so here we go. We got that. Um, nothing's here, but it's inside of VMV folder. You're gonna see inside a library, you'll see that Flask is now here, okay? So now the next thing we want to do is we're going to create the main entry uh, file to the program. So I'm going to go over here in the uh, left column and just right click or click this little plus sign here and we'll call it main.py. Kind of small, I hope you can see it. <clears throat> okay, so this is the main file. We'll leave it blank for now. We'll come back later after we um, create some other information. The next thing we want to do is we want to create an environment file called a dot flask. ENV, okay? So in, inside this file, uh, we're going to just include two statements, all caps, flask underscore ENV for environment, 
and we want to set it to development environment. We want to do that because we're just developing. So once you, you know, ready to go live, you want to change that to production or you want to remove that out completely. And also I want to uh, type in flask underscore app. This is the uh, link or the reference to the main application. File ours is called main.py, right? So main.py. So this file is going to point to this main file. If you call it something else, then it should be named that, okay? So um, that is good. Save that. <clears throat> and then uh, you can close this file now. So the next thing I want to do is we want to install a module called python.env. And that file, what well, that module will load, will look inside this Flask env and run the application from here. And not only that, it will also manage the state of our application while it's running live. So is this very similar to the node monitor or node mon and uh, node.js. So again, down here, we're gonna go pip install and it's called python-env, okay? And then just hit enter. <clears throat> and that should install that for us very, I mean, very quickly. Um, so we're good there. All right, next we're going to create a folder to you know, store all the source code and other application, other framework that might use SRC for source. But for us, it's commonly known as app. So we're gonna create a folder called app. Okay, so inside the app folder here, there's nothing here yet. Now, the next thing you wanna create inside here is uh, a special file uh, with the under underscore. So if you make sure you select this folder here, click here, add a file, it's called underscore underscore init and the underscore underscore dot pi, okay? This is a special file that signifies that this folder called app is a Py Python module. Okay, it's very common. Uh, you will see that in, in most of the folders. So if you go in here, you're gonna see um, in here too, somewhere like go to library, you're gonna see that somewhere here you have, you can see this one here. Um, if you go here, you're gonna see this one here as well. Okay, so this is just a way to um, tell Python that this is a module. And, and then when you access the uh, data here, you can just access the folder name without the under under in your name. So these are like these are like one of the uh, I guess um, magic files. Okay. So what can I have in here is we're going to include the following. I'm going to say if I'm going to import uh, Flask from the um, no from Flask from the Flask framework. We're going to import uh, Flask the capital S. This is a uh, it's a class. We're going to use that class to instead change an object called app. So here we just say flask, um, and then it's a constructor. We pass in here the under underscore is two underscore, okay? Under under name under under, okay? It just means that this file, this load this file as the main entry file. And then finally down here, we're gonna also import from the app. You'll see this a little bit different, a little bit weird how it's, it's done here. It's like it's we cycles through the whole thing, but mm, we're gonna import a file or a, a module called routes, okay? So we're gonna create that um, in, in a minute. So that is the initialization for this. So save your file, this uh, app. And then now, since we created the application already, um, we have an object called app. So we need to import that into the main program. So go here, the main program. And then we are ready to now in, import from the app. Uh, yeah, app, import app. It's the same name, right? The first app here is the folder. And then the app here is the actual object name, which is, we call it app. So if you call it application or something, right? Like this, AAPP, then this could be called AAPP. Okay, this is the, the object name, okay? Folder name, object name. Or, or, or whatever you want to call it, object, classes, functions, it's, it's over here. So that's it for this file. You can close the main file, save it and close that. You can also close this. We're not gonna add anything more uh, until much later if you wanna go into like databases and all those stuff. So we'll leave this as is, and this is pretty good for now. Okay, 
So uh, now we can then um, go ahead and create a file inside the app folder in the same place in here. So create the file, we call it routes. So add a new file, we'll call this one here routes.py. So this routes.py contains mostly all the code to run your application. Of course, you can you know, build out and uh, move some of this code out to another file and pull it back. And of course, it, once it gets really big, but obviously pretty tiny. So we're just gonna do everything here, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is we go into uh, create uh, uh, or import from the um, app and then import app again, right? Looks looks a little bit weird, but usually that's what that's what you do. And then um, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a route in here. So it's the app symbol, call it app dot route, and then this <clears throat> takes as you can see a couple of parameters. The first one here is just the name of the route or the pattern is the backslash that is the home directory so we'll leave it at that and then the the at symbol that app here this is called a decorator okay we decorate the following function and uh, to do certain things so inside here we're going to call it function call index or you can call it home whatever you want to call it usually call it index here and then we just want to say return the word hello I'm just testing to make sure it works, right? So save this file, and then now we're gonna run and test and see if this works. I'm gonna close this init file here. Okay, so in the terminal, um, make sure again, you're always in the virtual environment, and we're gonna type in flask run, okay? If it's all successful, you're gonna see here that you're in the development environment, the debug is on, and the URL is at this link. So I'm going to copy this. You can also hold down control click and load that to the browser. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy that and load to the browser over here and put an URL at port 5000. You're going to see a really tiny message here is a hello flask. Okay, so that means we are good to go. We are ready to move on to the next step. <clears throat> right. So now we go into, I'm going to just move this out and go back in here. As you can see, you can leave this running if you want. You can close it uh, for now. You can add another one, but I'm gonna just exit out. And that's still running, by the way. So the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna um, go and add those folder I showed you earlier. So if you go back to your folder, which is um, the, the unit seven data, this is the one. Okay, remember this one here? So we're gonna add these three data to our file. And the one you wanna get is, um, it should be the one that says, um, let's see, the, yeah, the static template. Yeah, all of these will go inside the app folder, okay? So just make sure you drag inside the app folder here. I can just do, um, and I'll move things around later, but for now, I'm gonna move all these inside the app folder. So right in here, make sure it's in the app folder. And uh, now they're here, okay? So we have the st static data here, static folder. The templates, as you can see, it has all these templates, just, you know, HTML. This looks very similar, exactly the one that we created for the Node.js Ex Express. And then there are two folders, uh, two files for the providers. Okay, so this is the list. We're going to complete this part here. And then this is the add form. Again, all the fill fields are already filled in for you just to make things move it faster. Um, so, and then the, uh, the JSON file, which is this provider JSON here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm not going to use this just as is, okay? I'll leave it here, but I'm going to create another folder and we call it model, okay? You can call, put it inside the app folder, which is fine, or you can put it outside the unit seven. That's okay too, e either way, however you want to do it. So let's say that I put outside um, outside the unit seven or out here in the, in the global space, okay? Just to show you, you know, flexibility. So I'm gonna add a folder here, I'll call it models, okay? And I'm gonna move this pro provider's JSON into the, uh, to the folder here and just say yes. Okay, so now inside the models module folder here, uh, we'll come back and, and do later, okay? So this is a folder. So again, we'll create something similar to the init file, but we'll do that later. Um, <clears throat> okay, for now, let's um, 
go back to your route. And as you can see, now we just, you know, display some data to the browser using HTML or maybe using plain text. So what we want to do is we want to load using, um, you know, the, the templates, right? So we're going to go and update this using the template. And that means we're going to call from import from Flask a, um, the, a, a function called render, render template. So up here, I say from Flask, import the render template. This is the one we need to render the template. So instead of returning hello here, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to load in here, return, and then the render template. And then I pass to this template, usually two things. The first thing here, the first argument is the name of the template. And <clears throat> so it's an our template, it's inside the templates folders. Okay, so you must have the templates folder and the app folder here. So that Flask will know where it is, where it is pulling that from. Okay, so it will start from the templates folder. If you name it something else, it's not going to find it. So um, in here, the first argument is the name of the file, and ours is called. Uh, so if you look in here, we have a couple of files. <clears throat> Let me go over this a little bit here. So uh, we're not going to use a lot of these just for you know demonstration purposes, but if you look at the layout uh, template here. This template is the root template. Okay, it's called layout. You can call it like root if you want, or home template doesn't matter. And this is the um, the root template or the layout template. On the top here, I already put some code in here just to say that if the title is included, then show the title of the title name. Otherwise, show the default name of this uh, you know app. Okay, and then it has some links to some of these static files. You can see here are static. And it's coming from the root bootstrap render. That means that it's a folder called static. It will look inside the statics folder and inside the bootstrap. And then it goes in here and loads some bootstrap CSS. Okay, so that's it's all set up for you. So, um, you know, we have time. Go over there, look, look at this and see how this is structured. Okay, so that's all your CSS here. Now, this is the body of the, uh, the HTML from line 33 all the way down to line 61 is the navigation. So let me collapse this, you can see. And then here is the footer down here, collapse that. And then right below the footer, again, some scripts that are coming from the static folder inside a bootstrap again. So these are just used to um, for the bootstrap. Now, in between here, you're gonna see uh, it block content. This is um, Jinja syntax, wait, okay. So it's a special tag to um, tell the Jinja template that this is where we're going to inject all the content using this template. So if you are familiar with, um, you know, um, like especially ASP.NET, I look just like that. This is like the master file or the master site, right? And then in here you have a content placeholder to load the content to this area. Exactly same idea. Okay. So every every page you're going to use, this is going to be used as the layout. The things that are different are the things that are injected into this content. So this is a placeholder, okay? <clears throat> so, and here, our main page is, is indexed. So I, you know, named it exactly as it is. It's called index. This index HTML is gonna be the home page, the landing page. As you can see here, it just contains the header and then uh, some stuff in here, really, really simple stuff. I didn't include any, any you know, major information here. Um, but this is for the landing page. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, modify this just a little bit, and I'll show you why in a minute. But um, yeah, before I do that, though, let's let's go back to leave this open. Go to the routes here, and we're going to render the index, okay, the whole name, and we're going to pass to the index, um, you know, the title. Right, title will be you can call it, um, I don't know, uh, home page or something. Okay, it doesn't want to be better. We call it so. This title exists, therefore it should replace what we showed earlier. Okay, so this is the name of the template. Make sure it's a valid HTML file with the extension and everything. Okay, so now let's save this file. And uh, if your if you, you know, application is still running, just go to the browser and um, refresh the page. Okay, you can see that it's loading something, right? Um, except the only thing is that it's not style because we did not include the main layout, right? So if you do the source view, you're going to see this is exactly what you saw in the template, 
Okay, so now we're going to include this inside the template. And to do that, let's go back. So in the templates here, we want to include the other stuff, right? So you want this to be part of the content and, and so on. So the way to do this is that inside this template, you want to include the layout template. And you do that by adding a uh, the very top, a um, flag that says, uh, let me remember, extends. So you're extending or including the layout. Okay, so layout.html. So again, this is very similar to um, many, many programs like if you think about ASP.NET, this is like I'm loading the master page. Okay, same idea. And then here, this is what the block content goes for again, block and then space content. Right, very similar to ASP.NET. This is the content that's going to be uh, injected into the content area, right? That's what it means. And then make sure down here I close, um, I close the, the content down here. And so I'll say end, and uh, and block the block here. Okay, so very straight, very standard. Um, so all your templates should have this. Okay, so you're including the master page or the layout page inside a massive page, there is a block content inside a block content matching this block content here, okay? So in there, inject this information, right? That's what it, that's what it just means. So um, while we're here, I'm gonna go and copy this and go to all these uh, HTML page and add it to the top. And then um, make sure I do all of them and we're just gonna, uh, we'll, we'll fix it a little bit later. We'll continue on next. Okay, so forget password. Again, some of these are, we're not gonna use it, but um, I just put it anyway. So if you have time, you want to explore and uh, finish this up, you can do that, okay? So that's that. And then the bottom, we wanna make sure we close it. So on the very bottom, let's again type in block. Uh, no, yeah, make sure you spell it correctly. And then close it with a curly, okay? So if you don't do that, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna copy this and then add it to every other file. So if you finish that, I can close that one. The next one down here, save that. The next one, okay, save that. And then save that one. This is the next one. Okay, so index is good. And then now we're done. So let's go back to the browser and refresh and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, um, was an error about static instead. Okay, um, all right, so I have a problem here probably due to the, um, to the routing. Let's go back and fix it. And if you wanna know what's going on, if you have this kind of error, write this blue bar, you click on it and it will tell you what's wrong. And usually it's down here at the bottom. It says you could not build the endpoint of about, okay? Uh, did you mean the static instead? So it's just some clues to tell you. And so if you go back to um, go back to the code and over here, um, so I'm loading the templates here, uh, which is fine, I'm loading index page. I'm not sure why it's going the other place. Um, layout, HTML, um, all down here because I'm using a link called about, so it does not know what this one is, okay? So um, before we, we, we you know, you know uh, run the app, let's go ahead and add another one to load this HTML because this, this link exists, but it doesn't know how to find it. I think that's where it is. So why don't we go ahead and create another one. I'm gonna copy this and put it right below here. And this will be the slash about. And then this will be, let's change the function to say about. And let me turn this off. And we're gonna just, um, the template will be just about, and then the title will be about for now. Okay, just really simple like that. And um, then that should be, maybe that will take care of that problem for us. So let's see, save this, and then go to the page again and refresh. Okay, all right, so um, providers, I'm not sure why I have this problem here, probably this, um, those templates again, 
maybe our templates are not working the way it should. Okay, so I think it's the same thing, right? Because I provided some links already in the template. So why don't we go ahead and build all those first, okay? So it stopped crashing. It's it, because I'm loading the about page. And if you go to the about page, right? So there's a link to the providers. That means that I have to have the providers available. If I go to the providers and uh, it's gonna keep going, okay? So um, let's go and add some of these other routes. Let's, let's finish all of them while we're while we here. Go here and then um, go and put here. This would be what this would be. It could probably, uh, let's see, contact. Let's do contact first. Contact. I'm just going to copy this, make it quick. Contact, contact, and then the contact. Okay. So again, I'll copy this, go to the next one, and we'll call this is the um, uh, register. Again, we're not going to implement these, but. Um, these anyway. One more. How many more I have? I have one for the um, providers. I mean, this actually log in. I'll do one more down here. So this is the uh, login, and this is the providers. Um, okay, so we have those URLs. And I put here to function will be the same as this. Uh, let's come back in a minute here. Log in. And register. Okay, so let's make this a little bit nicer. Okay. Um, providers here. I'll call it service providers. Now, our providers template is not, if you just do this, is not going to work because we named ours differently, right? It's inside the providers folder, and then it's called providers list. Okay, so in here you have to say uh, providers slash providers dash list dot html. It has to be that name, or it wouldn't work. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then we have one more maybe for the forget password. Again, just copy this. We'll put right below here. And we'll call it forget um, dash password. And since we cannot use dash for the function name, we'll call it forget underscore password. And here will be again the name of that template is forget password HTML. And here you say forget. Okay, I think that's um, pretty much everything, right? We'll see, we'll see what it tells us, okay? Um, and then up here, notice I have a backslash. I can also add another route. You can, you can stack these up. I also wanna say the backslash goes to the homepage or backslash index, okay? So both of those will take you to the homepage. So let's save this and let's go to the browser and see if the errors are fixed. Oh, there you go, okay. So if it's all those links are, are created properly, this is going to be okay. If this is, that is the slash. If I go here, the about page, uh, the service provider, as you can see, it doesn't work yet because we did not include, I think we forgot to include the header and the content yet. And then the contact page, login, register. Great, so let's fix this providers page. So again, back to the uh, template here. Um, I'm going to copy this top, open the providers list. We did not do this two here. So make sure we do uh, both of these. Okay. And then we're going to just, um, I'm going to copy this. We're close at the end as well. Bottom here. And then at the bottom here as well. Okay, so save those. And you can close these out. So now let's um refresh one more time and see if that looks like okay perfect so now when we add provider we haven't created it yet we're going to add it later but now we're going to go and update the, the data the json data and then we're going to populate this uh, table here with this data okay so let's go back to the code and um add those data so now in the models folder so 
we're gonna do something like we did earlier. Let me close this templates here. So every folder, I mean, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna show you, this is the typical way to do it, okay? So every folder that you have, you wanna turn that into a, um, a, you know, a module. So again, create a file called under under init under under dot pi. Okay, what is this for? Well, we're gonna import the, J, the data file in here so that we can access directly from this folder. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. But first, let's create a, uh, a file called um, not providers, but I'm gonna call it inside the models folder, okay? I'm gonna call it, um, we should call it a, a little bit confusing, but um, providers.py, okay? As opposed to uh, the JSON. And maybe you don't need the JSON anymore, but um, so is the pi. So in here, I'm going to create a, um, a, a function and we'll call it um, providers list. Okay, it's a function. And this function will return the JSON data. So I'm gonna copy the JSON data. So you just copy everything here. Control A, copy everything go to the function here and just paste right in here. Okay, return all of that. That's all I'm saying. Return the entire list. I'm using a function to return that, okay? So um, if it's not in the right place, just to make sure it's in, it's correct. Um, let me see, I want to indent this a little bit. Let's see, I want to fix it just a little bit, just in case it doesn't crash my program. Remember, indentation is born in Python. Uh, let's see, that's it. Yeah, maybe that's fine. We'll give it a try, okay? If there's an error, we'll, we'll fix it. So again, save this file because this is a function called providers list. So when we go into the routes page, right? At the very top here, when we import the data, we usually would do something like this. So from the app that, uh, no, actually from the models folder, right? And then, Inside the models folder, there's a file called providers.py. So it'll be dot providers. Okay, from that file, we want to import a function called provider list. Okay, you can do it this way, which is fine, absolutely. So if you have a different name, like providers, you have um, a users.py, you have, you know, whatever.py, you can go through the models folder this way. This is okay. But what I want to show you is that. I don't need to go to the provider. I just want to do something like this, okay? In this case, if you're gonna do this way, then that's why the init file is used for. So that means I'm going to import it in here as opposed to in here, okay? So that I can just grab it and then uh, load it very quickly. So in here, I'm gonna do from the models folder, even though it's, it's itself, I say models dot uh, providers import the providers list, okay? So now, because this is imported, available in this init file, this module, then when I import from other locations, I just reference the folder name. I don't have to include that because it's already available, right? So to show you, if I go and remove and type providers, you'll see it's on the list, okay? So it's a little bit shorter. All right, so I import the list and then the next thing I want to do is um, because, okay, this is a function, by the way. Okay, this is a function, and you have two options. Remember, this is a function. Um, you can also create a, a, you can load the function over here. So if you just pass in a function over, which is fine, uh, or you can do this too. It's up to you. Lots of ways. So I can say providers. Uh, is equal to providers list and you call the function, right? So it's a little confusing because providers, you can say providers data, doesn't matter. So if I do it this way, I can then, you know, import this directly from here. Instead of say providers list, I can just load providers. And that is the object, but you can see it's confusing which one I'm using, right? This is a, um, the, the symbol here is a, it's a, it's a Python file. This is a data. This is a function, right? So confusing. So uh, let's say that I'm gonna go back in here and call the same name. So it's not too confusing. Um, 
I don't know. Yeah, I'll let you decide. Okay, so I have the same name, but then I'm calling the function to assign to that. Um, maybe not the best uh, idea, but um, so again, I'll call the providers list. So now it's not a function anymore; it's the actual data. Okay, so um, that's that. And so, and then down here in the providers list, I need then to load that providers list to the template. So I had the title, I can go over here, add another one. I'll call it the same, I'll call it providers is equal to providers list. Okay. So now I'm importing, importing um, the, the entire list to the providers as an object. Okay. And I call that because uh, I want to access the providers to the providers object. Okay, so we save that. Now go to the providers list HTML, and we're going to complete that part in the body here. Okay, so in here we're going to um, load the uh, load the data. So we call it providers. So in here we're going to call a loop. Let's do that first. It's going to be a full loop. So we can say for every provider in the providers list, right? Because we call it providers. This is the name that we pass to. We call it providers, okay? If you call it X, it's gonna be X. And let me go ahead and turn this off. Turn this off is confusing. So now in this list, okay, we're gonna, have, now we have access to each of those providers. And then at the end, just forget, don't, um, don't forget to close it. So it's like N4. So in here, we're gonna do the following, right? So I'm gonna create a every TR and then let me just move that up. And then here I have every TD, right? <clears throat> then it's gonna match these like the ID, first name, last name, position, company, and then the action will be like delete and edit, just those two. So here I will put um, the mustache tag inside here is gonna be the provider, okay, of the ID. Okay, I'm gonna reference that using the square brackets. It's like the key. Provider is an object, right? So provider ID. And I'm gonna also style this using uh, with scope it to say row. It's a row. Okay, so you can duplicate this again. I think Alt Shift down a couple of times. The ID is the first name, last name, position, company, and actions. Okay, so the actions, of course, you're not gonna use this. And I'll leave that up for now because that's just some buttons. So the ID, this is going to be the first name. Okay, so make sure the name here, these uh, uh, properties have to match your data, right? So whatever you call here has to be exactly this, otherwise you won't find it. Okay, so the first name, this is the last name, and then position company. Okay, so that's those. And then down here, we're going to add just two links um, to do some operations. So this will be going to the URL called providers. And we want to edit this. Okay, so edit. And we're going to add the ID to this link. We want to add that ID. So in the URL, it's going to say provider slash edit slash whatever the ID is, right? For each of those uh, links. And we want to also um, uh, use the class called, this is a bootstrap class. It's going to be a button. And we'll call it button secondary. It's like kind of secondary, it's like blue, right? Blue link. And we want the button to be uh, small. Uh, I said, yeah, why doesn't do that, the wrapper? Okay, Okay. so uh, let me close this over here, give some room. So this is the link for the edit. I'm gonna uh, just close that first, and I'll call it edit. Okay, and I'll duplicate this again, Alt Shift down, and this is gonna be the delete. So I'll put here delete, same, same ID, and then over here I'm gonna say delete. 
and we'll you know perform this operation later for, for now. So we'll see if this is correct. It should render all the data here to the browser. Okay. So let's see. I think it looks good here. Um, we'll see what happens. So let's go into the browser and refresh our page. So here we go. All right. So we got the data here, as you can see, all of them. And uh, the button here, for some reason, it's not blue. Um, I probably missed something here. But anyway, so edit here, as you can see, it goes to edit and then has an ID. We go to implement that, implement this feature later. The delete as well goes to the delete uh, URL and then delete that ID. Okay, cool. Okay, so if you see this, uh, really good. And um, we're gonna go ahead and do a, um, the ad provider. So when you click the ad here, as you can see, it's gonna go to the providers slash ad provider. And we're gonna load that form here. So we're gonna build a URL for this as well. Um, I'm not sure why the color is not um, correct. I want to show like blue and red here. Uh, maybe I, um, let, let's see, let's change that. I want the button to be like really red. Uh, so the, maybe not secondary, this would be like danger. Okay. Danger, I think danger is the red. Um, yeah, that's the red. And then button secondary should be, I guess, I was hoping for blue, but I guess, oh, primary is blue, secondary is gray. Okay, maybe that's what it is. So let's see if it's red. I want it to be red, like a red. There we go. It just means danger, right? So, so there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and add this provider here. Okay, so we need this URL, um, providers slash and an app provider, okay? So you can copy this, and then we're gonna go to the uh, code again. And this time we're gonna go and add that to the bottom here, right? So we can go and add here and copy. I'll put it here for now if I don't forget. I'm gonna copy this and put it right below here. And now I'll, I'll add this into the pattern here. So this is the, Ad provider. Okay, so now, so all of these are we just performing like, um, you know, it's a getter, right? It's a get request. So we're just getting, getting. So by default, you can access the data this way. But when you post form data to the uh, server, then we need to add the second parameter here. Okay, this is um, where it gets, gives you um, the ability to like uh, access access form data. So if you don't include that, you're not gonna be able to like load data. So in here is a second parameter called methods. And the methods are usually just those two. It's a list of those methods. And you see like the get here, the post, right? and, and mainly those two, the get and post, because you are loading this from the browser. So if you don't include this, you're not gonna get the post. And because we wanna submit the form data over, you want to submit through the post, okay? So you include that inside the uh, the route here. So the function will be providers underscore. Um, well, should we call it providers add or uh, we can just call it add is fine. Yeah, we can, we can just call it add is okay. And I put here. Um, so so these would be like your APIs. Let me put this here, okay? because we have the get, this is like the get API. Right. It's like you get all, almost like that. And this would be like the um, uh, post or add API, right? Okay, so in here, once you do the add, then we have to uh, load the form. So the form is called provider add. Form. I think that's what's called. Let's go back and see. Yeah, provider add form is singular. It's inside providers folder. Okay, so make sure that there. And we'll call it add a provider, right? Okay, add provider is fine. And um, so that looks good. Okay, so for now, I just want to test to see, make sure that the form is loading. And then we'll go from there. So save that, go back to the browser. And refresh. 
So have a problem here. Um, URLs ad provider probably didn't match. Let's go back and try it again. Okay, uh, so it's not correctly um, with a slash. So maybe because of the slash here. Uh, no. Okay, well, let's try because maybe it doesn't match our um, doesn't match our code here. So ad provider. Um, Oh, the slash in the front. There we go. Very tricky. Okay, slash provider slash app provider. There we go. Now save it again. Go back to the browser and refresh. And wait a minute. Um, is it this thing? Yeah, without the backslash. Okay. So let's go back to the service provider. The link says, yeah, what the backslash over here, right? You see. Uh, that is uh, uh, important. So either we include that in the URL or don't include it. Okay, if you don't include it, then that means the link has to be um, fixed. So let's let's fix it without including that URL. So that means inside the provider's list HTML, the link that go to the provider, let's remove that slash, okay? If you want to, you can include both, right? Like I mentioned earlier, just in case that you might have that issue, you can go here and add two of those, um, you know, like, like this, right? Like that or like that, right? Again, that's okay. There's a different way to do this using the API, but for now, we're just gonna assume that it's gonna be just without the slash. Okay, so that looks good. Now, um, so the form did load and we're going to then, you know, fill out this information here. If you try to click submit, right? This is already required. So you can't do that. If I do this and click submit, as you can see, let's put here a at b.com. And if I load that, it's gonna go and call the ad form. And we don't want this up here, right? This is a get method. We wanna go post, okay? So let's go fix our form and we are almost done. So we're back here in the Provider is not list, but the ad form. Okay, so everything is already filled in for us, which is great. We just need to add the form head up here. So it's called, let's call the action to go to um, the providers, which is the same page, slash um, add provider. Okay, we can leave it blank. It should load the same page, but I'll just do that just for um, safety reasons. And then the method I want to go through the post. Okay, so now it's going to go through the body of the um, uh, of the, uh, the uh, submission. So we're not going to see that, which is going to be perfect. Okay, so save that. And then now, when the data comes back, right, it will have the uh, the first name, last name, position, email, and company. I have actually more than what I need a phone number. I don't think we need a phone number here, do we? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need email in, and uh, yeah, we don't have email and phone number. Our data doesn't have those. So if you go and see, yeah, just um, first, last ID, position, and then company. Okay, so we're gonna remove that email and um, I don't need the email and I don't need the phone number. So let's delete those two fields. Okay, this will just be, you know, five fields. And notice I did not include the ID because I want to auto-generate the ID using random number, okay? So it would just be, you know, four fields here, really. And um, yeah, so let's go back and take a look at it again. So let's reload this page. As you can see, just four fields, right? And then we're gonna, if I do it again, and submit, so perfect, right? It goes to the same URL, but we did not capture that in the back end. So it's working perfectly fine. So now let's go and add our form. So I'm gonna close this, close this here, go to the route. When the data comes back, okay, it's gonna come back through the post. And so usually when it comes back, you can check to see if it's really coming a post or get. So by default, notice it loads the same URL, right? When I go to the app page, it's loading the same URL. When I submit data coming back, it's either coming through a get or through the post request. 
So when you load the form itself, it's automatically the get request. So however, you, when, when you catch the data come back as they post, this is very similar to PHP, right? When you submit the form, you get from the post uh, um, request as opposed to the get. So that means up here, I can check it. So you can say, if the request, now there's a request object, we need to include that in here. Um, method is equal to uh, post. If that is the case, then that means that this route or the form has been submitted, okay? Because we call it post. Otherwise, this will not match. So the request object is not available yet. So I need to pull that in from the flask. So at the very top here, oh, it, which you did already, which is great, right? Perfect. If yours did not automatically import it, you have to import that here from the flask, okay? And 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 that should be good for, for this part. So we're gonna go and then go ahead and um, complete the rest. Okay, so perfect. So go back down here. That means when the data comes back in the uh, post, we're going to generate a random number and I'll call this ID is equal to a, we're gonna also import that. We'll see if it automatically imports it or not, okay? It's through the random class, oops, random. And then a dot is a rand int, okay? That's, it's going to randomize an int number and we'll get a range from, let's just say anywhere between 1000 and um, comma and 9999, okay? So kind of match our ID, I mean, our uh, ID, right? So you can see that it has like uh, a lot more actually, but so yeah, six numbers. Let's make it a little bit bigger between 100,000 and 999. Yeah, six digits, one more. Okay, so yeah, it will randomize between 100,000 to 999. Okay, so kind of match that. And let's see if, it, if random is important. If it's not, we can import that up here. So it's not, okay? So you have to import, um, just wait import random because it will pull that um, from the library. Perfect. <clears throat> so I got my ID. And then the next thing is I'm going to build that provider. That new provider should look identical to this syntax here. Okay, so you can copy this. That looks exactly like this in order to work. So over here, then I'm going to um, create, say a new provider, I call it provider is equal to that object, right? And let me just indent this a little bit because it doesn't like the indentation here. Well, it looks something like that. And so the ID will be this ID here. So I put the ID here. Now, the first name is gonna be coming from the request object dot form. And then it's a list of fields. So it's called first name, right? That's the first name field. <clears throat> and then you will include that, uh, right, to every of those fields and they should match um, match all those uh, files. So I'm gonna go and do the same thing for the second one, copy that, and then just replace this. I'll copy this as well. Okay, so just copy that over. And this fields over here has to match the field in the form. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the correct data. <clears throat> okay, so once I got my data, my provide, this is a new provider, and then I'm going to add this to this uh, this list over here, right? My, my new list, which is um, the providers list, okay? Remember that in the models folder, we initialize it. We created a, a list from the function because the function here returns a list, right? A list of objects. So therefore, all we have to do is we're gonna add to this list. And a Python, you add that by using a function called append. So providers this dot append, append the new provider. Okay, we're gonna add that to the provider. That is all. Um, and I think that's it. And then once we're done, okay. So if, if this is the case, we're gonna go here and random a number. 
build that new provider <clears throat> with the data from the form. And they're gonna push that or append that to the provider's list. And then what, right? And if you don't do anything else, it's gonna go out of the if block and it's gonna load their same page again, right? So once we added the data, we want to go to a different page. Okay, so initially we load this page. It's a get request, so it doesn't match this, so it's to be ignored. We're gonna load the ad form. Once we submit it to the post, it goes inside here and then what, right? So usually after this, we want to return to a different page. So you do that by calling another function called redirect. And this redirect here will also need to import if it's not import automatically, which I think it may have already import up here. Um, if it's not, you can import it from the Flask as well. It's called redirect, okay? It will redirect the user to a different URL. So down here, we just basically give the link, right? The link of that URL. In our case, you want to redirect the user back to the um, provider's page. So we put here slash providers. If you wanted to take it to use it back to the home page, you put slash index or just slash, right? So wherever you want to um, um, take the user to. Okay, I, I choose this because it's gonna go add to the provider's page and you're gonna see the new data there. So we'll see if this works. So let's save that, go to our page. And now we are going just, I'm just gonna refresh it, make sure it's reloading. Um, let's go back here again, add, make sure it loads. Okay, <clears throat> so make sure that our data, if you can see has everything here. Um, if it is updated, it should be at the very bottom of the list down here, okay? Because we're gonna append it to the end of the list. So I put my name, uh, the CEO of my company. Okay, so hit app provider. So as you can see, it takes back to the providers page. And if it's correct, then it should be at the very bottom of the list. And here it is, perfect. Okay, so that's how you add data to the list. Now, of course, this is just a RAM in a RAM, right? So it's not permanent data store. So usually you would you know, add this to a database um, and then you would store that permanent data. So we just added some data here and it uh, looks pretty good. So um, what's next? Oh, well, I think that's just good for now. Um, so next time we will continue on with this application. We're going to implement the edit and the delete features.